is the darkness of imagination. Looks like he entered in some kind of uh, meteor field. Here, one man has found the terror. Something's infesting the ship. You are coming in too fast. And the terror has found the earth. The official stories of the Nautilus burned up. There's nothing left. For the Nautilus, the voyage has ended. What is it? That's what I'm here to find out. For everyone else, the nightmare has just begun. Right now we've got one job. Stay alive long enough to warn people about this. Something is out there. It's my guess something came through here. There's something big. Something that knows our fears. Did you hear something? Something that knows our desires. Here he comes. Something that must be found. Get out of here, go! Before it destroys us all. Hey guys, I'm Speaking Cations, and welcome to my review of Dark Universe. Now, in all honesty, this isn't probably be the best review since this movie sucks. Sucks cocks and dicks. It just sucked. It was one of the most pathetic excuses of filmmaking I've seen in a while. And it was directed by who else? Another pathetically horrible director. Oh, Steve Latshaw, who gave us the equally pathetic. Jacko. Oh, great. I knew I was in for it from the beginning. I almost didn't want to review this because I'm like, what am I really going to say about this film? That's really honestly going to be really entertaining or, I don't know, really that thought provoking. And, you know, I just thought as well, I might as well just make this video to warn you. To warn you folks about it. You know, if you ever see this film anywhere, if you see it for sale for 50 cents, if you see it for a penny, don't buy this movie. Don't watch it. Don't see it. It just isn't worth your time. Trust me. Anyway, the basic gist of the plot is um, Joe Estevez, doing his best Martin Sheen impersonation here in this one, plays some wealthy businessman named Rod Kendrick. Now, Rod Kendrick has decided he's had enough of NASA and the pussy fitting around and decides to basically fund his own space station, his space shuttle program. So, he sends his own space shuttle, the Nautilus, into space. We don't for to look at, yeah, I don't really know why. The film doesn't explain why. It just says he just wants to send his freaking shuttle into space with one of the most incompetent crew members I could ever think of. Probably one of the worst astronauts ever because he doesn't even wear a space suit. While he's in space. You know, I thought you would wear some sort of suits. You know, this guy's literally wearing like freaking overalls, it looks like, while he's in the space shuttle. I don't know. I have no idea. And the space shuttle is going. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not slowing. It's not just sitting there. It's moving in space. I thought you wore space suits and you were strapped in the chair, not just standing there talking on a microphone. Talking on your walkie-talkie to Martin Sheen. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> uh, it's a bad movie, okay? I wasn't expecting greatness. It's a B-movie. It's terrible. We all know that. But I was at least expe expecting, I don't know, some something competent. This is definitely not a competent production. Um, so basically, the space shuttle moves way too fast. It's like, you know, space shuttles just move... You know, the space shuttle in this film looks like it literally got a boost of nitrous and just going <laughs> like, uh, space shuttles don't go that fast. I don't know. I've never seen a space shuttle in space go, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit, did he put some nitrous in there? I'm just like, come on now. 
So then what happens is, well, the astronaut, who's some big, some fat guy, who, um, I forgot what his name is, it's just, um, oh, oh, um, Tom? Is it Tom? Is it Fred? Who, who is, Steve, Steve Thomas, Steve Barkett, who, in all honesty, I, is it the same guy who directed The Aftermath? Dude, you've done better than this. What the hell, dude? This is from the guy, Steve Barker, who directed a little, sort of, little B -move, fun little B-movie about, you know, the apocalypse. You know, apocalyptic B-movie called The Aftermath. Which was actually a lot of fun. It had zombies and everything like that. That was ten times better than this. He starred in that film, and he also starred in, th in this film, but he gained a lot of weight. Time hasn't been kind of Steve Barkin, I guess. All I gotta say it was just over out of shape astronaut named Steve. No, it's not just Steve. It's his name is Steve Thomas. And so Steve Thomas talks to Martin Sheen on the on the Mocky Talkie and says, "There's something going wrong. There's some spores, some alien spores. I'm going down." Ah! So the Nautilus crashes in some Florida wetland, and then basically Rod Kendrick sends this group of you know scientists and grew this guy who studies aliens to go look at you know to try to find a spaceship, and and then all kinds of you know hilarity ensues. Really, what happens actually more like you know all kinds of stuff you know makes you snooze is more like it. it's not really hilarity. There's some moments of humor but I don't think they were intentional but anyway basically what happens is Steve Johnson while he was crashing Steve John Steve Johnson not Steve Johnson Steve Thompson Steve Thomas Steve Thomas it's fucking Thomas so Steve Thomas is that the name of the guy who owned Wendy's anyway Steve Thomas here he basically did there's a shitty morph effect and his hand morphs into like some weird looking claw thing basically what happens is Steve Thomas because of the weird spores he mutates into well some sort of alien <laughs> which looks like literally this alien looks so fucking pathetic it looks like <laughs> it looks like if a chest burster grew to big lengths it just looks like a pathetic looking giant test chest burster from alien if you don't believe me, take a look at this pathetic shit. You see for myself. You see it for yourself. It's one of the most pathetic looking monsters I've seen in a long time. It reminds me of the monster from Hybrid, an equally lame sci fi horror flick. Roll that beautiful dark universe footage. Thing is just fucking terrible look. It looks like shit. It wouldn't scare a two-year-old. It looks like one of those things you can find in the in the crane machines, a little stuffed animal. Or it looks like a deformed pill bug. I don't know what the fuck that thing is. It's just pathetic. It's not scary. I just want you, you want to put it out of its misery. Anyways, so you have the rest of the cast, who is this group that's sent to go investigate and try to find the, the spaceship. And it consists of a chick named Kim Masters, played by Blake Pickett. Judy Lawson, who plays, you know, who's played by Laurie Sherman. Tom Hanning is played by ben Bentley Tittle. No, it has not, not, there's nothing to do with Tom Hanning. This is one of the main characters. It is, no, it's Hanniger. It's Hanniger who was in the My Bloody Valentine remake. It was close. <laughs> Tom Hanning, who just, yeah. Shouldn't act again. John Maynard is Frank Norris, um, who's the alien expert. Paul Austin Sanders. Paul Austin Sanders is Jack Reese. Patrick Moran. Patrick Moron is Carlson. Tom Ferguson is Denning. Um, yeah, just a bunch of stuff. But basically, the big first time you see the monster show up 
is when Dave Squatch Ward, who <laughs> that's his real name, plays a guy named Birdwatcher, and his girlfriend Birdwatcher, Beth McCallister, played by Beth McAllister, she ends up getting they end up getting attacked by the monster. Now the whole thing is though this bird watcher guy Squatch is totally not interested at all in the advances of the girl who's literally wants to sex him up and he's just like oh we were here to look at birds why do you want to do this I'm like you freaking loser she's hitting on you come on man looking at gay ass birds is more is more up your alley than getting some nookie give me a flipping break you fucking idiot so they both die then you have the whole mission to go to the wetlands to find what's remained left over from the Nautilus. And you have this guy who's their boat captain who's trying to help them, you know. He's the captain of the, you know, the, the boat ship, the hovercraft, or whatever they're called. But they ride a lot, you know, in Florida over the swamps. <laughs> this guy, he's obviously not an actor. He must be an actual boat captain because the guy can't hack for shit. It's, his delivery is so fucking wooden, it just hurt. It's like you're getting hit in the face with a wooden plank. It's that bad. So then basically the rest of the film consists of, like I said, the crew looking for the ship. They find the remains of the ship. The freaking monster, who, whose name used to be Steve... Basically, he turns out that Steve was anemic, so he basically shoots this tentacle out of its alien mouth and takes the blood out of people, turning into, like, basically shriveled up corpses, which reminds me of Life Force, and I'd rather watch Life Force rather than Dark Universe, even with Life Force's flaws. So then, basically, there isn't much gore to this film. I don't know why it's rated R. I think it's rated R for nudity. There's some tits, titties in this film. And there's a moment where it's just there's just tits shown just to show tits because there's no other reason to show it just to show tits. I I, I really I can't explain it very much just to see the film. There's literally a moment where it's just like oh tits, <laughs> and then it just doesn't build up to anything. So then basically what happens is <laughs> the alien scientist dude and the reporter. There's a reporter chick. She ends up finding that there's this orange shit all over the place or all over the swamp and this orange shit it looks like fucking play-doh I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was play-doh it's supposed to be the alien spores but it looks so obviously like the filmmakers are so fucking cheap and I wouldn't put this behind them I, I would not that they bought a bunch of play-doh orange play-doh and just threw it all over the freaking swamp and just st stuck it on the inside of the remains of the ship it is so fucking cheap. It looks like Play-Doh. It's so fucking s shitty looking. So then basically, the alien, you know, researcher dude, he's just hanging out while there's this other guy who is this nerd. I call him a nerd because he just wears glasses and he's just, he's just a nerd. He's a nerdy guy. Nerdy guy. And so nerdy guy, basically, he takes, he, somehow he's able to, I don't know, get, almost get you know laid by this really hot chick which I'm like give me a break no way and so he takes his pants takes his shirt off and uh, shows his rippling uh, bones and then he basically takes his he's about to take his pants off and then he's about to you know go downtown on the chick and <laughs> I kid you not this is what happens next <sighs> he freaking he yells out in pain. He's like, ah! And she's like, what's wrong? He's like, ah! And then you pan down, and there's a flip. There's a fucking armadillo. There's a motherfucking armadillo biting his freaking ankle, and it's covered in this orange Play-Doh. And it's like, what the hell? Freaking killer armadillos? I mean, I was laughing at that, my ass off at that, because come on, that, there's no way that's scary. Give me a break. The mascot from the team from Necessary Roughness, come on now. Freaking armadillo.